Today we're getting into the nitty gritty. We're talking about the Lamecki Brockington injury and how the Gophers will likely address that role. Then moving forward, we're going to talk about the wild, wild west of the Big Ten. How is it shaking out as of late? And finally, we've got a women's basketball preview. Just like last week we did the men's, this week we do the women's before Big Ten media days next week. You are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here. We're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name's Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant, here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And we've got some nitty gritty details to get to today because the Gophers lost one of their biggest wide receivers that has played the most snaps this season. How will they address that? And then on top of that, what is the wild, wild west of the Big Ten looking like now that there's been injuries across the board, now that we're about a third of the way through the season, how are things shaking out? And finally, we got to talk women's hoops. This might be one of the most exciting teams at the Golden Gophers program this year. And I'm going to tell you why as we break it down into who could be the starters, who could be what the new play style is and all that and more here at Lockdown Golden Gophers. So be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any daily Gopher content moving forward. But let's jump in. Let's talk about this Brockington injury because it was heavily impactful. Now you're talking about on a Zach Evans run, Brockington went, went down to injury and then he got he was out there for a while. He got carted off the field and it didn't look great. It looked like something where you're like, oh, we might have lost him long term. And we did. He is out for the season officially. And now you've got a wide receiver room that had a lot of depth to it, but you've got a Brockington injury. You still don't know what is happening with the Chris Ottman Bell injury, and his snaps haven't really been there at all this year. So you're walking into two major injuries when you had a room of maybe top five players in the in the receiver room, five that were really getting snaps. So that moves you down to three, but does that mean you have to address more youth into that, or does that mean more players have to step up that weren't getting as many snaps now? We're going to dive into the different options, but just to stress how much Lamecki Brockton has actually been on the field, I jumped in, I looked at the percentages for each game and snap percentages based on how many offensive snaps the team had. Now, Daniel Jackson has been the number one receiver. We've known that. We could have assumed that. It was a strong possibility that we thought Daniel Jackson would lead this team, and it plays out. Nebraska, he was on the field for 93% of the offensive snaps. Uh, Eastern Michigan, 76. UNC, 97. Uh, Northwestern, 92. And Louisiana, 94. So he's been out there a good percent of 90 or more percent for most games. But then after that, who has been the wide receiver too? Now, my thought had been Corey Crooms right from the jump. But if you look at the actual snap percentages, it was actually Lamecki Brockington for a lot of these games. Now, Corey Crooms was 72% versus Nebraska, 32% against Eastern Michigan, UNC 76%, 67 and 69 for the final two games so far that we played. Whereas Lamecki Brockington was in there 54, 57 for the first two. But then the next two after that, UNC and Northwestern, it was 71 and 73%. And then he was in there for 27% of the snaps prior to getting injured. So 27 of the whole snaps of the game, even though it would have been more had he not gotten injured. So those three receivers have been your leading three receivers by far and away. And Lamecki Brockington was basically on the field as a wide receiver too, it, for the most part. There were some games where Corey Crooms was, they kind of shifted and had a lot of the percentages. So do you think all of that goes to Corey Crooms and you're seeing two main wide receivers or do others get involved? I would lean towards the ladder of others getting involved. And you can kind of see that with Elijah Spencer and his production and, and his uh, snaps so far as well. Now, the first two games, 38%, 32%. Then the next two games, UNC and Northwestern, 19% and 8%. So not very much on the field for him in those two games. But then you look at Louisiana, and after that injury, he definitely was on the field more. He ticked up to 42%, which is the most he's been on the field so far this year. And I would expect probably to see a little bit more of Elijah Spencer moving forward. 
But with Lamecki Brockington seeing the second most snaps of the wide receivers, if you look at those snaps, 85% of those snaps he took were lined up as an outside wide receiver. So about 15% were on in, within the slot. So who will fill those voids? Who can take those snaps? Or will it just go to Crooms, uh, Spencer, and then Daniel Jackson? Maybe he's getting up to the 95, 98%. I don't think that's what it is. I think Daniel Jackson's role, or at least snap percentage, stays the same. Maybe the role tweaks a little bit. But I think there's three options that you can look at when it comes to filling Lamecki Brockington's role. Option number one. Logic would tell us that Elijah Spencer is the next man up, and we have seen his highest percent of on the field for offensive snaps in this last game after Lamecki Brockington went down. He also plays mainly on the outside, so it makes a lot of sense, even though him and Brockington are very different wide receivers stylistically. They have different strengths, different skill sets. Now, that being said, his targets haven't been going up very much. He's had four total targets on the year. Now, this is a guy who absolutely dominated at Charlotte last year, and I have been questioning, why aren't we getting this guy the ball? I mean, you look at the spring game once again, and folks, I know the spring game isn't everything, but you look at the spring game and you saw Zach Evans, and you're like, this dude's a dude. He can go 175 yards and a touchdown, shook a dude, ran it for 75 yards. Or look, Zach Evans is a guy. Why isn't he playing? That was a huge question for us. We see him get on the field and we see him be effective. Ask yourself the same question with Elijah Spencer. He had, what, 15 targets in the spring game? Caught 11 or 12 of them for like over 130 yards and a touchdown? Almost had multiple touchdowns in that game? Why aren't we using Elijah Spencer more? That's a big question for me. He has the talent. We've seen the talent, not only here, but at his last stop. So you got to wonder why these offensive coordinators aren't getting him more and more involved. Four targets isn't a real chance for a player to show what they can do, or for a player to have the opportunity to continue to prove to you that they should be more and more involved. We've got to get him some more targets. I think that will come up with this injury. But overall, the Gophers should look to get him going moving forward. Now, in sets where Lamecki Brockington maybe would have been running certain route packages, maybe you're moving those type of route packages to Daniel Jackson like we saw it shift and we heard about on the touchdown for the last touchdown in the Louisiana game where they had him run a route that was meant for Lamecki Brockington. So maybe you see more of those explosive over the top type plays going more towards Daniel Jackson and then the Daniel Jackson routes, which were maybe more separating routes or more creation with your route running go to Elijah Spencer because that is a skill set of his and a strength of his. So maybe you see tweaks in their routes, but more of the Spencer in the Brockington snaps. That's how I think option one and probably the most likely option would play out. But option number two is if Chris Ottman Bell is healthy, then he likely steps into the vacancy. Now, that being said, after logging snaps at both North Carolina and Northwestern, he was ruled out in the Louisiana game. Haven't really gotten much of an update there. So it's hard to tell exactly where he is health wise. Did things get worse? Did something get tweaked? Or why did he go from playing in snaps, playing in snaps, playing in snaps and the snaps going up? to an automatic out in the last game? It's a big question, and so that's why you got to look over to option number three as well. And option number three is that you incorporate more looks for young guys like Kenrick Lanier and Christian Hoskins. Now, Hoskins could take that 15% of slot snaps because he is a, more of a slot wide receiver. They can get creative with him, but he can also play that over-the-top explosive dynamic wide receiver role that Brockington brought to this team. So you can bring those same elements of speed and explosion with a guy like Christian Hoskins. And I think that could be big for the Gophers and they're going to need someone like that. You can't just have Daniel Jackson because as much as I love Daniel Jackson, and his skill sets, he's not a take the top off type wide receiver. He's got some speed to him, but not like what we see from Lamecki Brockington getting past guys at times and definitely not like Ken or Christian Hoskins, who is probably one of the fastest players on the entire team. So you have that option in uh, Christian Hoskins with the slot snaps, but maybe on the outside, you see more of Kenrick Lanier, who we saw in the spring and the fall have success, especially as a young, true freshman. He brought elements to that outside position, and we saw him get decent run and show good 
uh, growth, show good opportunity, show good talent that was right there. Like, oh, this guy's going to be something. He's going to be special. And even Chris Hotman Bell told us in the Gophers media day, look, he's the future. That guy can ball. So he's got the talent to play now, but do the Gophers want to potentially burn that red shirt? That's a big question now that you're almost halfway through the season. Regardless, I think Minnesota has to find a way to get Christian Hoskins on the field in some capacity because he's already used his red shirt season. He should be in the returning game. He should be in some speed elements for this offense. You should get some usage out of him because he can bring a new element to your offense. So we'll see how the Gophers address this. Like I said, I think number one, you're seeing Elijah Spencer out there. But even if you take that idea of pairing that we talked about with Lanier and Hoskins, even if you keep Lanier's red shirt and you're like, Hoskins, we got to get him on the field, put him in the slot role, and then have Elijah Spencer fill the outside role, you still get Christian Hoskins on the field for 15 to 20% of snaps, which could not only help him now, but help him with the program moving forward where you're going to need him next year when you don't have Corey Crooms as your number one slot receiver. So it's going to be pertinent for the Gophers to start working guys in and getting them ready, just like we got Lamecki Brockington ready last season and worked him in. I'm hoping they'll do something similar with Christian Hoskins, but we got to talk about the Wild Wild West. We got to talk about what is happening and what has shifted now that we are almost halfway through this college football season. That's what is coming up next here at Locked On Golden Gophers. All right, folks, first we got to talk to you about our friends over at eBay Motors because passion, drive, and patience are what bring home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your vehicle alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, uh, LED headlights, exhaust kits, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one vehicle, your ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And then on top of that, they have the eBay Guaranteed Fit, which shows when you go and put your ride into the onto the website and then you look at the different parts, if you see that green check mark, you know it is guaranteed to fit your vehicle every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need for the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive with ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, Gophers fans, thank you so much for making Locked On Golden Gophers your first listen when it comes to Gophers Daily Sports. Now we're talking about the changes in the wild, wild west. Where are we at so far now that we're approaching the halfway point of the season? Now, if you're taking a look at the landscape, a lay of the land, I think you look at this thing and you look at the injuries that have happened and the losses that have come for teams that are maybe unexpected and things like that. I think, unfortunately... Right now, Wisconsin leads the charge, plain and simple. They're at the top of the standings right now, having only played one in-conference game against Purdue, which I thought they could lose that game. It was a potential, but they won it handily, so credit to them. Now, as many will assume, Wisconsin probably leads the charge, but there are still ways for them to fumble the bag, for them to lose the opportunity to win the West. It, it depends on other teams stepping up, but it also depends on them having maybe one additional loss with Ohio State. Now, Ohio State, a lot of people chalk up as a loss for Wisconsin, so let's do that for now. We'll talk, count that as a loss. That's two conference losses. That would be three total losses for Wisconsin. But then, if they can have one more conference loss in there, one more conference loss, preferably to a Western division opponent, whether that be at Illinois, at Iowa, uh, one more before the Gophers take them on, then you can talk about potentially the Gophers getting back into that race, even with the loss to Northwestern. So it's not impossible. It's not completely off the table. Uh, if Minnesota takes care of business, except for this Michigan and Ohio State game, which we can chalk up for now, then there's still a puncher's chance for Minnesota to be in that race and in that environment. And it relies on tiebreakers, which we've relied on in the past few years. And we always have come up short on the tiebreaker end. So 
Minnesota is going to have to step their game up if they want to have any chance in the wild, wild west. But it runs through Wisconsin as of right now. Now, Iowa is still in this thing too, but Iowa also lost their starting quarterback for the season with an ACL injury. Cade McNamara is done, and they moved to Deacon Hill, who did not have a great game in that that first game coming up, replacing Cade McNamara versus Michigan State. That being said, he was thrown into the game, so we'll see how he looks this upcoming week and if he can put it more together, having knowing being the guy moving into the game. We'll keep an eye on how he plays, but if he steps up and steps in, then maybe Iowa can still keep their names at the top of the conversations. If he doesn't, if he struggles, if we go back to, oh gosh, Iowa can't move the ball on offense, then you're probably not looking at a great opportunity since the defense is still really good, but it's not to the elite levels we've seen Iowa over the past few years. So I'm not sure the defense itself can carry them to a Big Ten West title. So I was chances have definitely been hurt a little bit. Now, I still think Illinois can be in there and win games. I'm not sure if they can win the West, but I think they can upset teams. I think they could pull a big win against Wisconsin, against Minnesota, against Iowa, or whoever they're playing. I think they can still pull some scrappy wins out. Just hopefully it's not here in Dinkytown, and hopefully it is against Wisconsin to help bring that balance back to this crazy Wild West. Now, on top of that, Purdue has been overlooked this offseason. And they've shown to be pretty decent over the season. They've had moments of hiccups. They've had moments of mistakes. They got kind of ran over at Wisconsin by making mistakes. And so if Purdue probably doesn't win the West, but again, like Illinois, I think they can absolutely take wins from other teams. And they still got Minnesota on the schedule. They've still got Iowa on the schedule. So they can still kind of shake things up and take people out of West contention. And if everything goes right, maybe they can get back into it. But Wisconsin having that tiebreaker over them is going to be a difficult thing to overcome. So once again, it's probably Wisconsin's to lose. Northwestern, I don't know. I mean, I, we can't count them out as Minnesota fans anymore since they came back in the fourth quarter and whooped us down. So we'll see what happens with this West, but Nebraska could still steal some wins. I think it is scrappy. And again, it's probably Wisconsin's to lose. But that being said, they don't call it the wild, wild West for nothing. And I don't think a single team in the West division of the Big Ten has truly asserted themselves as a dynamic force, as a dynamo, as a as a lock to win this thing. So it's still up for grabs. In my opinion, Wisconsin probably has the lead on it, but I think there are still teams that could come back into this thing as long as they take care of business. Now, if Minnesota didn't screw around and lose that game to Northwestern, especially with the Iowa quarterback going down, you could have made a strong case for Minnesota to potentially win the West if they were looking at a 2-0 West division record right now on top of then maybe you have better odds versus Iowa going to Iowa. Maybe everything starts playing in your favor, even with Michigan and Ohio State on the schedule. But losing that game was huge, and it could come back to bite us because alas, every single year, it seems like we have a what-if game, and we end up one game away, one game that could have led to a stop to Indy if Minnesota had taken care of business, 2019, both the late rival losses, one to Iowa, one to uh, one to Wisconsin, you win one of those games. You're in the Big Ten West title, or you have the Big Ten West title. You're in the Big Ten West or Big Ten Championship. 2020, COVID, wash, whatever. We didn't really do all that. 2021, Bowling Green, you win that one game. You're in Indy. 2022, you win that Purdue game. You're in Indy. Is Northwestern going to be the next name to add to that list of being one game away from being the Big Ten West title champion? All those years, we've seen the single game flips, and I have a feeling it could turn out that way. Hopefully not, but we'll see what happens. But that's what the Big Ten West is looking like as of right now. Now, to wrap this thing up, I want to talk about women's basketball because the week before we talked about men's basketball, gave you a preview of what the starters could look like, who are the key players for the year, what is going on with updates for the team, have there been injuries, and also we have a brand new head coach. And I'm going to tell you what to expect from that head coach, and it is exciting. That's what's coming up next to wrap up today's show.
All right, Govers fans, we're talking women's hoops to wrap this one up, and I'm going to jump right in. We're going to talk about who I think is going to be the starting five in rotation for this women's basketball team. Now, the women's basketball team, in my opinion, could be one of the most exciting sports teams for the Gophers for this winter sports session. I like them just as much as I like the men's hockey team. Now, the men's hockey team has championship aspirations. I'm not sure the women's basketball team is quite there right now, but at the same time, I think they can get themselves into tournament play, postseason play. That is a realistic option for the women's basketball team, plus the men's and women's basketball Big Ten tournaments are both in Minneapolis. So hopefully we'll get to see our Gophers have some success. And I think you really could with this women's basketball team. Now, from what I've gathered so far, I think your starters are looking at a very young starting lineup. I think you're looking at Amaya Battle running the one, Mara Braun running the two. Now we saw both of them starting a lot last season. So that's no news, new news to you right there. But coming in at the three, I think Grace Kuchowski is going to be a very key piece for the Gophers. She's going to be a baller for the Gophers. She's got a knockdown three. She is one of the best 100 recruits in the nation last year, according to ESPNW. And she followed Coach Plitzewhite to Minnesota. She had previously been committed to West Virginia and now is committed to Minnesota. And I think she is going to be a walking bucket. She's got handles. She can do it all. She can play like a point forward if necessary, but she, it seems like she's really been grasping onto things here. It seems like she's really picking up the offense and fitting in smoothly with her teammates. I think she's going to be a big time player for the Gophers. I've got her kind of written in as the starting three. Then you've got Mallory Heyer, who is again, one of those freshmen from last year who balled out coming in at the four. I think she runs that again. And then finally, Sophie Hart, starting center for the Gophers. She's got the size. She has the talent. She's from Minnesota, I believe. Now, she was out at, uh, I believe, North Carolina State. I could be wrong on that one. I could be thinking of the wrong logo, but she was rocking red and black somewhere else. And she transferred in last year while Coach Whalen and them were still here, but she couldn't play because she transferred in the middle of the year. That being said, she got to know her teammates. She got to develop with them, build that chemistry. And if you didn't know this, the new coach, Don Plitzewhite, with West Virginia actually was heavily after Sophie White in that transfer portal as well. And now they get to actually play together or be coached by uh, Don Plitzewhite. You get what I'm saying there. But regardless, I think that that's going to be a big addition for the Gophers and probably our starting center. Then when you look at the rotation after that, I think three players stand out as players that will probably be heavily involved. You're looking at Maggie Zanano, the first person off the bench, in my opinion. I think she is that sixth woman for this team. Then you got Nia, uh, Nia Holloway and Janae Sanders. Janae Sanders, a transfer coming in as well, who is very versatile on the defensive end of the ball, can play the one through the four defensively and has that toughness and grit to hang in there. So I think those are your top eight in the rotation. Now, can they move beyond a rotation of an eight? Absolutely. But you got to see how the freshmen come along, how they develop, and let them come along at their own time, as well as you've got Aminata, who is back. She transferred in last year. She wasn't able to play because she had a season-ending injury, so I'm unsure of what her role will be moving forward, and it's something for us to keep an eye on. Now, beyond that rotation of eight, I had Kennedy Click as one of the players I thought could maybe step up and play some heavy minutes for the Gophers or play some rotational minutes as a guard, as a point guard on this team, but unfortunately... She suffered an injury this offseason. I believe it was a knee injury, and she is out for the year. So we lost another player to a year-long injury, and you just hate to see it. You hate to see it, but well wishes to her, and hopefully she can bounce back strong heading into year two. Now, like I said, Grace Grichowski, I think she is going to be a key player, a potential starter for this Gophers team as a true freshman. But as for the other freshmen, I thought – Click was maybe the next one up when it came to a contributor. Clearly, that isn't going to happen this season. But you've got Ajok Medal, you've got McKenley Dalen, you've got Ayana Johnson, you've got Bryn Senden as the other freshmen on this team. And I think with this current roster, you don't have to rush them to the floor. You can let them grow and develop at their own pace. And when they're ready, if someone steps up and they're showing out in practice and they're making uh, the right moves, the right execution, and all of a sudden they get some minutes at the end of some cleanup games and they're doing really well and keeping that momentum going, then maybe you see them step into that ninth person role on the rotation and getting more minutes and getting more involved. So they can grow at their own pace, which is great for freshmen that you don't have to rely on them for key minutes. 
Now, when we're talking about the key players of the Gophers women's basketball team, I think overall you've got Mara Braun, you've got Mallory Heyer. They're going to be huge for the roster. They were huge scorers for the team last year. And everyone is going to be excited for those players to take that second year leap. But on top of that, I think the three pivotal players for the success of the season and how much success you find in 2023 is going to come down to Amaya Battle, Sophie Hart, and Maggie Zanano. I think their contributions and how much of an impact they have on the season can help this team in its way or on its way to trying to get into the NCAA tournament. Now, if those three are clicking and balling out and you're talking about a point guard who not only has was one of the best distributors of the basketball last year, but she also can get rebounds. She also can get steals. She gets defensive touches. All of that was good. But if she continues to polish it up and takes that next step, and big time, which I know was a big emphasis, point of emphasis in improvement this offseason, if Amaya Battle can knock down her three-point shots and start to convert more on the three-point line and make guards respect her defensively while continuing to be a distributor, while continuing to be a difference maker with assists, and, well, I just said distributor, but with rebounds and with her defensive play, Amaya Battle will be huge for this team and help them take a step up in these Big Ten rankings, Big Ten standings. On top of that, Sophie Hart brings size that this team did not have on the floor last year. I believe she's six foot five. So she is really someone that can be a difference maker and an advantage point for the Gophers and how they use her in the block and as a post player and especially to clean up on the rebound. So if Sophie Hart becomes a dominant post player, it makes you respect the inside in the paint while also having the ability to kick out to some shooters like Mara Braun, like uh, Mallory Heyer, who are knockdown shooters, like Grace Grachowski, who can hit the three as well. So Sophie Hart having an inside presence that can be big, can be huge, and allow Mallory Heyer to space out, which will be big time. And then finally, Maggie Zanano. She's got the veteran presence. We've seen what her sister did as she developed through her years at Iowa and absolutely balled out. And I think Maggie Zanano can play a similar role as far as bringing a vet presence, bringing a leadership, but bringing scoring off the bench, being the first person off the bench and keeping the scoring up. If Mara Braun needs a breather, if Mallory Heyer needs a breather, if we can't work the ball inside, Maggie Zanano could be that next player to step up and give you some scoring efforts with the mid-range game moving forward. And if, if she continues to develop and really embraces that role, I think she could be an absolute weapon for this Gophers team and help them take the step towards trying to get to postseason play. Now, to wrap this thing up, we have to talk about the coach because Coach Plitzewhite and her records and accolades, they stand for themselves. She has 15 winning seasons and nine 20 win seasons on top of two 30 win campaigns. She gets winning done. Now her teams have reached the postseason in 15 of her 16 seasons. She's had one season where she hasn't reached postseason play. And as a head coach, she has competed in the last four NCAA tournaments. Now Plitz White's career coaching record is 356 wins, 141 losses. That's a 72% clip of a winning percentage. And she's 266 in league play within the conference. So if she can get this team off to a hot start like she did with Western Virginia, like she has with her other schools, then she can definitely make, have the Gophers making noise in 2023. Her teams have finished tied for fifth or higher in regular season conference play in all 16 of her seasons. And she has recorded 11 top three conference finishes. So if that success continues, if it starts to click with the Gophers, we could be in the top five of the Big Ten and really making some noise competing over these next couple years. And with these players, with this roster that we have, it isn't a far stretch. Now, a reminder of this play style that Coach Plitz White likes to play with. She likes to play fast. She plays immense defense and loves disruptions. She needs disruptions and deflections. Those are huge on her team. Now, on top of that, she's extremely analytical, film-based learning and preparation, and understands why she likes to make sure the players understand why and it, it translates to the games understanding why you are doing everything the whys of practice why you practice that way why this drill why this team finds success here in these moments why we're going to attack this way etc she builds the on the court IQ from the jump and that cognitive recognition goes a long 
way. So I'm very excited for Coach Plitzway in this one. I'm excited to see how it all works out. The final questions that I have for the Gophers women's basketball team this season is one Mara Bronze leap because she has been playing with Team USA three on three basketball all over the all over the world over these last few months. And I think that that can help her take that second sophomore leap, that secondary leap in year two, because not only was she playing a lot of lockdown defense uh, defensively and showing that she has that ability, but she had the confidence when scoring, which was needed. And I think it'll be a huge leap for her in big 10 play of having that confidence moving forward, having done it all across, all across the entire world. She's a walking bucket. And if you can add that defense, and you look at her release, which looks like it's even quicker this offseason. She can be a deadly player in the Big Ten. She even got an all Big Ten preseason nod. And if she continues to develop and continues to be a scoring threat, I think she could absolutely make an all Big Ten team in year two. My second question is, with video and analytics being so much of a big approach by this coaching philosophy, how do you really implement and integrate that style while still preventing overthinking or helping the players continue to play instinctively? That's definitely something that I'm curious to see how Coach Putzoy does. And finally, what type of impact do the bigs play in this role, in this team style of play? How important are the big players? So we're going to see what happens here. But I have high hopes for the Gophers team and the program, specifically the uh, this year and moving forward. And we'll keep you covered on them throughout the rest of the season. That's going to do it for us on today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit subscribe, follow along, roll the boats, got you, my go Gophers, as always. And don't forget to subscribe.